Okay, so let's talk about uh, what we are going to talk today here is life cycle hook methods. So these are really important because uh, we are going to talk about how exactly the LWC is getting rendered. And we are not going to cover everything today. We are only going to cover three parts. One is constructor, connected callback, and rendered callback. And we are going to cover uh, renderer, disconnected callback, and error callback in the coming video that is tomorrow. So this is how the complete lifecycle looks like for any Lightning Web component. And everything is flows from parent to child. So if you have uh, two different components in hierarchy, then first the parent is going to walk and then child is going to walk. How? We are going to see in the picture as well. In the picture means so we are going to see how practically it works. And then we are also going to talk about uh, when, uh, which method is going, going to be executed, which one is used for which purpose, uh, when we are going to use uh, what kind of method, uh, what all functionalities or manipulation we should be doing within the lifecycle hook methods. Okay, so this is how actually it, it starts. The first thing is that it's going to, like there is maybe you have a Lightning Web component, you add it into a maybe Lightning Aura application or digital experiences or within the Lightning experience standard or console navigation. So the very first thing that is going to be, it uh, the parent constructor is going to be executed. So if you have a, two different, like if you have a component, the hierarchy component, then the constructor on the parent component is going to be executed. If the component is a standalone component, then the constructor on that component is going to be executed. Okay. Constructor is again a default uh, method that we have. We could also create the constructor and uh, we would see how to get the constructor and what are all the required attributes that we should be putting within the constructor. Then if there are any public properties, the public properties are pending to be updated. That means you are getting the property from the parent component with the help of add the red API decorator. Then it's uh, if that is there, then it's going to update the public property. That means assign the property from the whatever the values that we're getting from the parent component. Then parent is going, the parent component is actually going to get inserted into the dome. And once the component is inserted into the dome, then connected callback is going to be executed. And finally, the parent is going to be rendered. The UI on the parent component is going to be rendered. And if there is any child component uh, within the parent component itself, then the constructor on the child component. So whatever we have seen here, all these steps are going to be taken care of, uh, taken in place by the child component as well, starting from constructor to render, okay? And then, what happened? Okay, yeah. Then rendered callback on the child method, the child component is going to be executed. So once your parent is rendered and your child is rendered, then the rendered callback, this is a method, rendered callback is going to be executed and on the child component. And once the rendered component on the child component has been executed, then rendered callback on the parent will get executed. So if you have the hierarchy, this is how your component is going to be initialized in the UI. And this happens very fast so that we don't even uh, get to know that our component has been loaded, initialized, inserted into the dome, uh, rendered, connected, everything, it is happening within the seconds, okay? And this is basically uh, the, we, we will say that the flow for disconnected callback because there is no disconnected callback here. There is no error callback here, okay? So what happens if a parent is removed from the dome, the disconnected callback on the parent is going to be called, then the disconnected, uh, sorry. Parent is removed from the dome, disconnected callback is going to be called on the parent component. If child is removed from the dome, disconnected callback from the child component is going to be executed. If those are related, this is the process like 
first parent is going to be destroyed and then child is going to get destroyed. So let's talk about <coughs> what is constructor. Uh, constructor is basically a special kind of method as we we are from the Salesforce Apex background and I am assuming that you all have uh, developed some sort of Apex code. So you know that what's the constructor in Apex means, okay? When we talk about constructor in Lightning Web Component, it's kind of similar. Uh, it is again a special kind of method where that gets executed every time a Lightning Web Component is getting initialized, okay? And the process or the flow is uh, going to be, first your parent is going to get uh, like, first the constructor on the parent is going to get fired and all other uh, methods or all the process is going to get happened that we have seen, then the child is going to be, the constructor on the child component is going to be executed. One thing that we really need to uh, remember is that the first statement, the first statement of our uh, constructor is going to be always going to be super. This says that we are going to call the constructor of your super component, super class. And what is super class? We will see that as well. And at the point of constructor, there won't be any properties ready. So you will not be able to access the properties. If you try to access the properties, either you get the undefined error or maybe some uncertain error that you get into while you're trying to access the properties at the point of constructor. What we should do, what we should not do within the constructor, okay? So we could uh, use the navigation service. What are the navigation service? We'll talk into the coming videos, but uh, just to give you an over overview or the idea, uh, what we could do is let's say there is a component and uh, as soon as that component gets loaded, we wanted to navigate uh, the user to a different screen. It could be a record detail page, could be record edit phase, maybe experience builder pages, could be any other external URL that we wanted to navigate. That is something we could do within our constructor. We could also make a Apex class, uh, Apex class call from the constructor and then store it somewhere in the variable. We could, we can also call the UI record API methods like creating a record, updating a record or uh, deleting a record, okay? But we cannot uh, really try to access, we cannot try to access the attributes, any element, the STM element, elements that are not even accessible. The reason, because at the time of constructor, the component is getting loaded and there is no, like it's, it's still not, inserted into the dome. So there is no, uh, we'll say, it's not uh, not even a possibility that it's going to give you the HTML attributes, okay? You cannot create or dispatch the custom event from the constructor. And uh, you cannot also manipulate the dome. When we say manipulate the dome, that means you cannot uh, uh, get the data with the help of query selector or with the help of query selector all and I think this uh, like manipulation of the dome is also not possible. These are some of the example screenshots. Example screenshots, uh, left is parent and uh, right is child. Where we have a simple constructors, if you see here, uh, constructor is there, the first statement is super. Child is containing a property called greeting. Parent is also containing a property called greeting, but uh, the child is basically, a public property and the parent one is a private property. And we're just having a, the constructor is getting called and we are trying to uh, do initialization, uh, initialization on some of the properties, okay? So let's quickly have, uh, we are going to create uh, two components and we are going to see how it actually works, the constructor one. Okay, so, I'm going to create a component called parent H uh, because H is basically donating to, or I'll say parent hook. This is our parent component and we are going to follow the same thing. We'll say greeting is a property that doesn't have anything. And now we, if we wanted to have our constructor, we wanted to override the constructor, the default constructor that our class called parent hook has, what we could do is we could say constructor. This constructor is it should be everything on a small. 
and as we talked about the first statement is always going to be super and that is going to call the constructor of your parent component parent class so what is the parent class so parent class is lightning element if you see here this is extending there is a keyword called extends and extends is used whenever we wanted to extend the property or a method we wanted to access the property or a method of our parent class and our parent class is lightning element so that's why we are using super and then we could have a construct console.log here and we can say console on parent and then let's try to assign some value to a property called greeting and we'll say hello and then let's try to do the like we we wanted to print the message over here the greeting message that we have just prepared okay so this is just a very simple thing on the parent and then let's quickly go to the html and we are going to have a card here yeah feel feel free to interrupt me in between if you feel that you are lost or you're not following me okay so here i'm going to have a paragraph where i'll say parent and then i'm also going to have another paragraph where i'll add something else now we wanted to use this component utilize this component within the lightning app builder so we are going to make it as exposed and we are going to say lifecycle hook as a master label and then targets we are going to utilize the by default target that we get the three record app page app page and home page okay so our parent is ready let's go ahead and deploy this so far we have not created any child component we just utilize we have just said okay this is a parent component okay now let's go ahead uh, get back to our salesforce org and try to utilize parent component somewhere here and see if our console the console on the constructor is getting executed or not and what is happening Okay, so we've just added our component. Let's see in the console. So if you could see here, console on the parent. Uh, okay, I think there is some uh, mistake, type of mistake. That's fine. Console on the parent, and we see that this is our message which says that hello. Okay, so that the picture, the UI that I've shown, showcase your the PPT that was basically by keeping in mind that there are going to be one or more components in hierarchy. But if you really don't have those, a component in hierarchy all the lifecycle hook methods are, are going to work as it is the way that we have seen into the flow like starting from constructor to rendered callback so the constructor has been basically executed on the parent now let's quickly create the child as well so we are going to create child hook component and similarly we are going to create a public property called uh, with uh, annotated with the api and we'll say greeting Okay, and then we are going to have a constructor here. And uh, let's have a construct console.log. Okay, and we will say constructor in child. Okay, constructor in child component. And let's also try to print this greeting. Okay, this dot greeting. And let's deploy this. So we just have a simple child uh, JavaScript. We are not bothered about anything on the HTML side because we are working with the lifecycle hook methods. And within the parent component, let's quickly call here our child component, which is C hyphen child hook. Okay.
And then if you uh, remember that our component also has a property called greeting, let's pass some value over here and say greeting equal to, and we have the same property that is greeting within our parent component as well, this one. So we've just utilized the components uh, within our component and we are able to just utilize our component within the parent component and we are using child component and we'll see what happens. Our deployment has been done and we refresh this. Now, now you could see here, we've got console on parent, you've got console on parent which says hello, but we've got constructor in child component and we really don't see the greeting. We really don't see the message here. If you see here, this particular message is not being displayed at all. Okay, because this property is not yet ready in the constructor. If you remember, we talked about the properties, the public properties are not ready in the constructor. So we cannot like, when we say public properties are not ready, that means if you are trying to pass the value from your parent component into the child component, you could not really use that property into the constructor of your child component. So if there is a huge case where you wanted to take the value and based on the disease, maybe based on the value of this parameter, you wanted to perform some action, you really have to take a help from the other lifecycle hook methods. And we will see what are those other lifecycle hook methods where we, it will be helpful. So there, there is a question uh, from Nikhil. Uh, can you please explain what is the use of super and why do we need to call it as the first statement? So I'm not sure if you're clear about the inheritance concept uh, in Salesforce or in Hoops concept. So basically when there are two components, parent and child, when I say component, you can also relate with Apex class. So if there are two classes, parent and child, uh, you really wanted to inherit the property from your parent component within your child component, you, you have to extend that component, okay? You have to extend the parent class within your child class. So in our Lightning Web component, this is our child class the our own component which we developed that is child hook. Okay, I think uh, I forgot to put super here. Yeah. So child hook is our own class that we have created, okay? And then uh, lightning element is the class which LWC provides us, which Salesforce provides us that we are getting from LWC module, okay? Now, if I really wanted to take the help, uh, take the access the parent class variables or methods, because we have got this keyword, which is basically associated with this component, right? And if you really wanted to access any variables or methods, or even if I wanted to define the constructor of my child component, it's required that we should always use super keyword to call the constructor of our parent component. And that is how basically it's designed by, uh, that is how it is by design by Salesforce that uh, you have to utilize super. And this is also not by Salesforce. It is also something, the OOPS concept. If you have to, if you wanted to call the constructor of your parent component, uh, you want to access the properties of your parent component. You wanted to access the methods of your parent component. You have to utilize this super so that if there is any properties or maybe if there are any um, assignments or maybe property assignments, method assignments, some variables assignment that is happening behind the uh, parent component uh, constructor, it would be very easy for them to get the values assigned. So that's why we use a super. And uh, if I had to talk about in terms of Lightning Web Component, it's going to be very rare case where you will use constructor. But you need to know what is constructor and what all you can do with constructor and what all you cannot do with constructor. Is it clear? Yeah, so yeah, I think more. Can, can, can we use the getter and setter also here? Because uh, those also right will be executed. Getter and setter where? 
like we create right get variables. So inside constructor can be accessed then. See, property access is you can access any property. We are also accessing in our parent component. We are assigning those here. The thing that we need to be remember keep in mind is any public property is not ready within the constructor. Even if you're passing the value from your parent component, like if you see here, we're passing the value, right? Greeting. Yes. Okay. We're passing the value, but this value is not accessible here because the reason is that it's not yet updated. If we get back to our flow, you would, uh, you would see here, first the constructor is getting called, then the properties are getting updated. And what properties we're talking about, these are the public properties. Okay, so that's what we are, we are saying. Even if you create getter and setters, yes, you could create. There is no as such uh, boundaries and all limitations. You could create the getters and you could return anything that you want. But if you want to, you, you could also try to access those uh, within the constructor. But these are the private properties and these are the public properties. So there is a difference between both the properties. Okay, and maybe you can also try to see whatever you're getting within this in the cons in the console you could go there and then maybe say this dot options so basically whatever like you have a question there is always a we will say a, not work around there, there is always something that you can go ahead and give it a try and find out the answer because i may not be covering all the scenarios all the questions that 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 are coming to your mind that's why there is a uh, i'll say there is something that we say, I go ahead and do the hands-on. Now let's see here in the console. These are our consoles, right? These are coming from the parent where we say, okay, console from parent, there is a message, hello, that we got. This is a console from our child component. These are the two. The first one is without a mass uh, property. Second one is with the property that it says that this dot greeting, which says undefined because it's not defined yet. It's not updated yet. And then third one is options. There is nothing, not even array. That's not being printed over here because that is also not ready yet. So if you wanted to refer, yes, you can refer. But uh, will you be able to access the values? No, you will not be able to access the values. Values in the sense, whatever the value you are getting from the parent, you will not be able to get that. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, I one question on the flow, the first slide. Okay. Yeah, I think here the execution is from child to parent. Right? If we have grandchild, it will be same, right? Grandchild. Yeah, it child. will be same. It will be same. Yeah. Same. Right? In in that in that case, you are. Uh, Parent is going to be child and grandparent is going to be parent. Yeah. yeah. Because at a time there are always going to be two components hierarchies. Like when it is executing. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the next that is connected callback. Okay. So connected callback is uh, something which is getting initiated, uh, getting called whenever the component is inserted into the dome. We have also seen that the component is going to be inserted into the dome. And then as soon as the component is get uh, inserted into the dome, the connected callback is going to be called. That means now our component is in the dome, our properties are loaded uh, and we are able to read the HTML attributes as well because it has been connected to the dome that means the properties are there so when when we when we really wanted to utilize connected callback so if there is a huge case where you wanted to perform some manipulation some business logic whenever your component is loaded okay when we say component is loaded means your properties are ready so coming back to the previous uh, example Let's say that uh, th there could be a property here, for example, greeting itself. Let's say that based on the value that you're getting on the greeting attribute, you wanted to maybe call an Apex class by making some filters or something else. You could ju just go ahead and do that with the help of connected callback. 
the flow that we talked about, it's always going to flow from the parent to child. And we cannot still access the child elements because they are not exist. They doesn't exist. When we say child elements, that means uh, we cannot really access this particular with the help of uh, this dot query selector or query selector all. We cannot access this element because this yet need to be initialized. And this is the child is only going to be initialized once the component parent component is rendered. So we cannot really access the child component. So we really need to keep this in mind that uh, child component is not yet there. Okay. Now these are again the examples. Uh, again, simulating the same parent to child. Parent has a constructor and parent has a connected callback. Child has a constructor and child has a connected callback. Now, what are the do, do's and don'ts within this method? So within the constructor, we could not really fire a custom event, but here we could fire a custom event. We could use the UI record APIs. We could use the navigation services we talked about. We can subscribe and unsubscribe from the messaging channels. What are the messaging channels we will see in the coming videos? We can also access the elements from the component, but the elements that we do own, not the child elements. When we say we do own, that means uh, I can access this paragraph. If this paragraph has certain class, okay, like a parent container or something, I could access this paragraph, but I cannot really access this child element because this is not there in the UI. What, what we cannot do, we really don't, uh, we cannot really call the child class. We cannot really call the child class public methods. We cannot set the value to the child class public properties because they are not there in the UI. The reason I'm repeating the same thing because there is also going to be a big brother of connected callback. There we will see similar kind of activities and people, mostly people gets confused between connected callback and rendered callback. So that's why I'm just repeating it multiple times. Child component are not going to be there in connected callback. Okay, let's quickly see what really happens in case of connected callback. So first we are going to define a connected callback here in our parent component. And this is the method, this is the name, connected callback where C, the second C, the callback in, sorry, the C in callback is going to be in caps. And we could say like just the simple component here. Okay, we'll say connected callback in parent. That's it. And I'm going to change it now. Constructor. Okay, this is on the parent and let's quickly provide the same here on the child as well. So connected callback in child. Okay. And let's also print this value, value to this variable, which is this dot greeting, and then this dot options as well. And see what really happens. Are we able to access those properties? Are we able to access those variables or not? Okay. So let's deploy the child component as well as the parent component to test the functionality. Okay, so our code is deployed now. And if we refresh this. You can see here now we've got constructor parent constructor on parent hello connected callback on parent. So this is how we got the like constructor and connected callback on parent. Then we have got uh, constructor on the child component, which is having Okay, nothing. Then we have got the second message which says constructor on child component. Uh, the greeting, there is nothing undefined. Options, there is nothing. Then connected callback in child, greeting says hello, and option says that there is nothing. No, uh, nothing because it's just returning an empty array. Okay. Now, if you see why we are able to get the value now here on the hello, because we talked about uh, it's really going to set the public property after the constructor. So once the constructor is loaded on the child, it really did set the public property. And then within the connected callback, we really got the parent component. 
the value from the parent component that we are getting in the property. That's why we got it there. So any questions on the connected callback? Okay. You do that you can access, uh, like uh, you write them right some class of the uh, paragraph, like child container. Yeah. So you can access that in connected callback. Actually, yes. that part. When I say access, that means you can access the elements. This is the element. If you really wanted to access this parent class, let's say you wanted to access this paragraph which has a class called parent container using the query selector. And maybe you wanted to change the, let's say the font size, the color of that component, you could do that. And that's, this is how you will do. Uh, you could say, okay, let para, okay, it could be para and you will say this dot template dot query selector. And this is your class. This is your class. So you have to say, dot because uh, the class the css class is basically dot so you have to say dot now you got this paragraph and then you could say okay if there is something in the para you might want it to say para dot uh, not sure if this is really going to work para dot style dot maybe let's say color okay and we wanted to set to red Maybe it works, maybe not, because I haven't tried this. But this is how basically it's going to work. So let's say console.log, maybe para. And then you can just deploy it. So this is your parent component. You, this is the HTML on your parent component. So you could easily access it. And then if you really wanted to make the changes, modifications, you could try to do that. OK. Um, it says null. So. There, there is something um, wrong with that, okay? But you could definitely, you could try to access those elements and then what's there, it says access the element of the component. We can definitely access the elements, which are this this paragraph is, there, there could be some issue on this syntax. You really need to check, but you can access this, but you cannot really access this, okay? It, it says null, that means, there is a difference. If it is nothing that means undefined, then we will say that it's not working at all. Okay, syntax is correct, yeah. And then if you try to access this uh, child hook, you'll get the error. Um, not error exactly, you'll get undefined as a value because it's not defined yet. That's what the point says. Is it clear? Uh, yes, yes, good. Okay, so if no further questions, let's talk about uh, disconnected callback is something different. We'll talk later on. Uh, what was that? Okay, yeah, let's see disconnected callback itself. That's going to be easy to understand. So whenever, when the disconnected callbacks is going to be executed. So let's say that we have here in this component, we have got parent, we have got child as well. So if we uh, really uh, hide the child component or the parent component, that means we are removing the element from the dome, right? So if you are removing the element from the dome, our child component is now hidden. So if our child component is not hidden, then the disconnected callback is going to be called. Same goes with your parent component as well. So if your parent component is not displaying in the UI, that means it's hidden. So the disconnected callback is going to be executed. And as soon as the component is again uh, dis displayed, the connected callback is all again going to get executed. So what we really used to do within this class, uh, within this component called disconnected callback, that is uh, we really do the cleanup work. Like if we have subscribed to LMS, we have subscribed to CDC or platform events, we really go ahead and unsubscribe there. That's what we really use this disconnected callback. 
and uh, this is the example let's quickly talk about uh, how to make it work and then we will talk about what we really do within the disconnected callback so currently our child component is getting displayed by default now let's go to the child component html and maybe add a lightning card which i'm not going to have anything in the card like any title or nothing and here we're just going to say child component okay that's it and let's deploy this code to our parent um, our or salesforce org now within the parent component let's quickly have another paragraph okay this is not going to have any class and within this paragraph we will add a lightning button and this button is variant could be anything and label let's say change visibility it could be anything like you could title as you could label as anything and let's define this method called handle click and in this handle click what we will say is we'll set this dot so child as false okay or we are going to say something like this we will check okay we'll say if this dot so child that means the value is true let me complete it first okay if this dot so child that means if the value is true set to false and if the value is false set to true okay and let's define this variable here on the parent component and by default it is going to be true so for what we did is we said okay create a variable called so child and have a method and this is going to check uh, if the value for this variable is true set the value as false otherwise set the value as true now in our html component we are going to add the paragraph here we'll say if colon true so basically we are just adding a conditional statement where we are saying only so case this child component if the value for this variable so child is true and now within our child component we are going to define disconnected callback okay and you could just for the testing purpose you can say console.log and you will say disconnected callback and let's deploy this so we just made a few changes we deployed the tweaks to our salesforce org and this time if you notice that we have only added disconnected callback on the child component because that's how we are going to see the demo now let's get back to our salesforce org and refresh it if we will refresh initially we will see some logs we'll see some consoles as part of constructor and connected callback but the disconnected callbacks only gets executed when we are trying to hide or so basically hide our component which is child component so if you click on change visibility this component is going to be hidden the whole component and we will see here that some console is going to be appeared in the browser console so if you see here the component has been hidden and if you see on the console on the right hand side uh, we've got that disconnected callback on the child component if i again click on change visibility now i've got the child component and starting from constructor everything happened like as soon as my component again inserted like i tried to showcase the visibility of my component the complete life cycle started for that component if i click on again the button like if i keep doing that we will see the console here and we also see how the component is getting displayed and hidden right so that is what basically the disconnected callback is and uh, i hope now you got when actually the disconnected callback is going to be executed and then if we, we talk about uh, do's like removes the catch if we have some catch for that component uh, stored somewhere in the local storage of the browser we could remove that remove any event listener if we have uh, added any custom event listeners remove uh, like unsubscribe from the lms channels or the other 
platform events or CDC channels or the post topics that we have subscribed to. So these are some of the cleanup events that we really do within our unsubscribe. And we cannot really do anything else on the unsubscribe because now the component is not even in the dome. So we cannot make any further changes or further processing. So is, is this uh, okay? Any questions? Okay. Anyone? So your voice is not clear at all. I cannot hear you. Hello? Yeah, um, now what? Now what, what next? You want to do anything? Yes, Sweta will uh, again uh, walk you through. We are not setting the visibility here. We are setting the visibility on the parent component. This is the method handle click. So on the, on the click of a button, we just setting conditional statement. We're setting the visibility. We are saying, if the value of this comp, this variable, so child is true, then set as false. If uh, the value of so child is not true, that means it is already false, then set as true. And based on the conditional statement, which says if true, then only display this child component. So if the value is not true, this child component is not even going to get rendered. So if it is getting destroyed, it is removed from the dome, then we are calling the, just then the disconnected callback is getting called. So again, so disconnected callbacks executes or uh, it only executes whenever there is a, uh, what, what we say, like if your component is getting removed from the dome, then the disconnected callbacks gets called. And what we did here is we tried to simulate how our child component is like, the child component is first, it getting inserted into the dome. So constructor and connected callbacks are getting called. And then with the help of this variable, we are trying to sew and hide, like first remove the component from the dome. Uh, if we are removing, then the component is getting called that is disconnected callback. And then again, based on the button click, the component is getting displayed, inserted into the dome. So disconnected callback is getting called. What all we can do within disconnected callback is we can remove the catch if we have any uh, that uh, you might not work with. Uh, you can unsubscribe to LMS that will definitely work. You can unsubscribe to platform event or CDC that we will also see. And uh, you can also remove any event listeners that you have, the custom event listeners that you have, and that we will also see. So we'll, we are definitely going to see when to use disconnected callback and how effectively use. But uh, just to keep in mind that you really need to use disconnected callback whenever you really have to uh, remove the catch, uh, you remove the event listener and you subscribe the LMS channels because your component is not there in the dome. You cannot really keep these things just to degrade the performance of your Lightning Web component. Is it clear now? Sita, is it clear to you as well? Yes, Amit. Um, I was just thinking of one scenario if you could help me uh, to understand. Yeah, so, sure. Let's say I am I I am filling a form. So I have a page where one component uh, is. I mean, basically, it's a component. So uh, and there are different stages in that form. So when I click on the next button, a different component will be loaded. 
so on click of that uh, button so the current component which is being uh, shown so that will be uh, that will be disturbed so in that case uh, the disconnected callback will be called automatically yes if you have uh, added the disconnected callback in your class uh, it will get called like because the standard ones uh, we really don't know what they have maybe they just have a simple block is blocks like a simple method and they're not doing anything but yeah if you're hiding your component the disconnected callback will get called okay got it yep thank you thank you so yeah i think uh, we have covered three and there are uh, remaining three that is uh, one is renderer, uh, one is uh, like one is render, then one is uh, connect uh, disconnected callback, sorry, rendered callback, and then we have got error callback, okay? So error callback, we can quickly cover it because it's really simple and we really need not to wait for tomorrow's, okay? So uh, if you talk about error callback, so the error callback is basically used to capture the error that is being raised by the descendant component. When we say that descendant component in the tree, uh, tree that means uh, the child component. So if there is any error while loading the child component, okay, while rendering the child component, that then it is going to capture the error. So that's why the first point says that captures the error that happens in the child component during the lifecycle hooks. So if there is any error, once your component is initialized, the error callback cannot capture that error. But if there is any error during the initialization of the child component, then the error callback on the parent component will capture that error. So here you need to keep in mind that error in child component will be handled by the parent component error callback method. The error callback method in the child component will not handle that error. And that is by design, okay? The error callback really takes the two parameters. So far we have seen that connected callback or disconnected callback or constructor does not accept any parameters. But the error callback actually accept the two parameters. First one is error and the second one is a stack. The name should be same, okay? And then this method is basically the similar to the catch method or catch block of our Salesforce Apex as well as our JavaScript. So this is again a syntax for our error callback where we have got error callback which takes two parameters and then whatever the error that we are getting, we are assigning into the errors parameter that we have created as a private property, okay? And then uh, this is the demonstration of how you're going to see the error callback in our demo. This is our child component, if you could see here. Then there is an error callback, which just says, okay, on the child component itself, it says that, okay, there was some error in child, just the demo purpose, okay? Then if you see one thing, if you notice one thing in our connected callback, there is a statement which says that console.log so child.value. And there is no such property called so child defined here on the parent component. Okay, so this particular line is going to throw the error. And this is this has been put intentionally so that the error happens on the child component and we see the debug logs. Okay. So let's quickly see, this is our child component and in the connected callback itself, we are going to say console.log and we could say anything. So child.value or ABC, XYZ, you could, you could put anything in your so child, okay? To define a method, you just say error callback, okay? It takes two parameters as we talk about error and stack. And we could just cons do the console log, okay? And we can say error in child and whatever our error is, okay? And then we can also say stack in child and whatever our stack is. Let's copy the code, deploy it to the org and put the same in our parent component. And instead of uh, error in child, it is going to be error and stack in parent. Okay. 
let's deploy this just very simple if there is any error in the child component during the life cycle hook initialization then the error callback is going to be executed on the parent component let's refresh this okay so you could see here the console it says that error in parent uh, this is basically our uh, error we really don't see what it is because it's a proxy object uh, but if you see stack in parent it says that this is our parent uh, this is a child component where the actual error is so if you really have multiple components in your within your parent component and you don't know which component is causing the issue you could see the you could use the stack and its stack is going to give uh, let you know which child component is causing the problem but again as i said javascript is really weird language it is not going to tell you which line the error is so you have to figure it out by yourself that's how the use error callback works now i did this method intention like i added this method by intention here because i wanted to showcase that this is not going to get executed this is only going to get executed if this child component has its own child component like another child component and that component is throwing the error then only you will see it here okay and similarly if you try to throw the error in your parent component somewhere let's say like this from the connected callback okay instead of so child we could say so parent and you will notice that this error callback is also not going to get executed because now there is no like there, that is how salesforce has designed it so if you see here now after constructor connected call like after connected callback in parent that's the first line this one nothing got executed and you are not even able to see the lightning component here in the ui because nothing happened there was some there was some error it just stopped everything and you don't even know why so th these were some of the callback hooks methods four out of six that we have just covered today and then the two rendered callback and connected um, and render we are, we are going to see into the next video tomorrow any questions that you have anyone Okay, if not, uh, then I think uh, we're good. How we can do the error handling on the parent? So that is where you need to know how you debug a JavaScript code. I can quickly showcase, but this is not like, uh, you cannot say it's a um what i say it's a process but you could definitely follow the same for debugging okay like th this is just one part of your error handling where uh, sometimes you will see some pop-ups coming up which is giving you the weird error that you cannot really understand that i also not able to understand okay but what you could do is there is something called sources in your console okay if you go to sources why after you open the inspect element and you go to sources there is something called I think component uh, okay yeah so you need to go to the components there is a folder called components you need to go there then c is our namespace okay you got c and this is your parent component which says parent hook and this is our uh, quick account component that means there is also a component added into the uh, this home page which is quick account so this is how you will identify your component and this actually gives you the minify js that you cannot really read it okay let me go this way okay i hope you all can still see my console okay i, I don't see anyone is answering yeah yeah we can see so if 
this is a minified version of your java code and javascript you don't, you will really not see what's happening but if you scroll down here maybe somewhere around you will see something like this where you will e easily notice okay this is my class okay this is my connected callback this is my error callback this is my method all the variables and everything like not you will not see everything but most of the things you will see okay that means you you got it these are the fields you see here greeting and so child okay these are the two fields you have created so you will see most of the things now you really don't know where the issue is but you you know that uh, this is the last debug that you have got in your console that means this particular line is executing so you just go and click here over over to that line the blue line i see and um, maybe you see something else so just go ahead and click on that line and it's going to put a uh, it's going to put a breakpoint here on the right hand side if you see it's it really had added a breakpoint on the parent hook.js this line and then you can also add a console.log here and then once you have done with this process go ahead and then again refresh the page this time what will happen it's going to run in the debug mode okay Oh, sorry. We deployed it. Uh, we deployed the fix. Let me deploy the new changes again, the previous one. So this was the console which was getting executed and then you were getting the error. Okay, so it's really, okay. What happened? Why it's not running in debug mode? I've got the console, okay. We need to put enable uh, debug points on the module, not on the component. There will be a two J JS files. Can you uh, can you do control P where you can search for it? Uh, control P P is going to say print, right? Yeah. Uh, so under the lightning, uh, there is a component. Uh, it will be available at. Uh, uh, lightning slash page slash modules. No, no, I, it shouldn't be there because we don't see anything. Okay. Uh, uh, can you uh, can you please do uh, do the control P so I can show it to you. Okay. Command P. Yeah. Here you can type parenthood dot js. There will be two sessions. Yeah. You can. Okay. Yeah. There should be one. There will be one more. One more session called module slash sheet, because oh, that is in, the, in that class only it, uh, the debug will work. Because I have tried it a uh, lot of times in my real time, and uh, it's worked for me in the modules, not on the components. Oh, that's not here. That's only one. But for me, uh, even uh, when I tried, uh, it's showing two. JS files for me, one in the component, one in the module. Okay, let's let's say maybe refresh it. Okay, now we got it. Okay. Um, so basically, that is why it's it was not coming up because uh, these two checkboxes were unchecked. So let me again showcase you. Okay, just uh, run it. So these two checkbox on the breakpoint, under the breakpoints, these two we are not checked, okay. And then I said, okay, pause on caught and uncaught exception. Not sure if this is really going to work, okay. And then refreshed it. So we got it, okay. There is some error called foo, paused on exception. And where is that? Okay, let's quickly. So this is now, this is where you really need to be patient, okay. You really need to keep ticking this link, okay. And then find out where exactly you are getting the error. So just keep ticking and then see if if your this code is going there into your breakpoint that we have added, right? If you remember, we have added two breakpoints. Or maybe you can just say okay, there is something, these are the two buttons. I really won't, don't want it to click on that. Okay, maybe if I say, okay, 
we have the breakpoints watch the paper past yes we can use debugger keyword that's that is also one way and this is also one way yeah. i i really don't want it to use debugger keyword because it's unnecessary going to open debug well, what i mean unnecessary even if you don't want it to run the debugger if you're on a console it's going to run the debugger okay what is uh, I think this is really bad. I will say pause. Let me remove this first. I don't think this is okay. What is this? It removed the hooks. So uh, basically this is uh, this is one thing, but I really don't know why it's not working. I really have to put debugger now. So you could also put a debugger here. And this is really helpful for debugging the JavaScript code, not only in Salesforce, it's LWC, VFAs or any other, okay. And this is by default provided by JavaScript. And this runs if you are within the, what we say, if you have opened your console or you're within the inspect element, you try to refresh the page after opening the inspect element, the debugger also didn't work. So basically I have to check something. I'm not sure, maybe I've disabled some setting on the browser, but uh, you could go ahead, uh, you could, okay, maybe it was in not at all. Why that is not there? I'm sure this is not the place, right place. If I say pause on court exception, if I use this, okay, that's again going to take a lot. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not working. So I will maybe check it later point of time when we are working on it. Just remind, keep reminding me if you, if I forget it because I'm very good at forgetting the things. So just remind me and we'll take it later on. But debugger is your savior when you really don't know where is the error. So that is where you have to uh, go ahead and uh, use the debugger, use the console.logs and see which line, which line is coming up, which line is not coming, uh, where you are able to get the logs. So if you see, we, this is this was the la last log that we are able to see into the UI, that means this line is getting us the error. So it it is like simple in our case, but it's not going to be that simple in real time if you're getting into the issues. Then you have to take a help from the debugger. I will see what are the settings missing on my browser and why that debugger is not coming up. And if not, then maybe I'll try to utilize some other browser uh, to showcase this demo.